When the president said this, I about jumped out the chair. You're saying no corruption? No. None. No. There were some, there were some boneheaded decisions. Boneheaded out decisions. Of, out of a but local no office. mass corruption. Not even mass corruption. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Obviously. Okay. Not even a smidgen of corruption with the IRS. He knew when he said that nobody from the middle off the other day, nobody believed it. Not even the left wingers believe it. Okay? They just support everything he says. After all, does the don't people re- remember Lois Lerner taking the fifth? I mean, she was in everybody's face about it. I mean, she wasn't even, and she was up there with that look. I want to go up to smack the smirk right off her face. I mean, really. I mean, you know, how is it you, you, you are the head of the IRS, and when someone asks you a question, you say this. After very careful consideration, I've decided to follow my counsel's advice and not testify or answer any of the questions today. You're a government employee. You should be answering questions from the Congress. On the phone with us right now from the National Center for Public Policy Research, David Ridenauer. Hey, David. Hey, how you doing? Well, I like how Obama says there's not a smidgen of evidence of corruption, and they haven't even completed yet, nay, have they even begun an investigation of the IRS? Oh, man, there are so many things wrong with it. You know, it's kind of akin out to the Old West where, you know, a guy's told... We'll just make sure you get a fair trial right before you're hanging. You know, he's <laughs> determined uh, essentially what the ongoing investigation is. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not a great deal of a confidence builder for a lot of folks who were skeptical to begin with that there would be a serious investigation. And why might they be skeptical of a serious investigation? Well, for one, uh-huh. Uh, Barbara Bosserman, who is an Obama donor and campaign volunteer over the uh, Department of Justice, she's leading the investigation, mm-hmm. reportedly. Um, no, no conflict of interest there no. at all. Um, so, so that's number one. Number two, we hear leaks from the Justice Department into mm-hmm. the press that they don't anticipate any criminal uh, prosecutions in in this, because after all, similar to what uh, Barack Obama said in his interview with O'Reilly, mm-hmm. um, this was all a big mistake. People were just confused over at the IRS on how to apply the regulations, but they just happened to be confused under his administration rather than in previous administrations. Yeah. Uh, it, it, just all coincidental. So that's number one that's wrong with it. Mm hmm. But number two, consider something for a moment. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Department of Justice is theoretically conducting a thorough investigation of the political uses of the IRS, an investigation (laughs) that could lead right up to the White House. Yeah. Right? Okay, and the president just commented on it. There's a reason why people under investigation avoid talking to the press. Uh It's because their words could be interpreted as an attempt to coordinate stories, impede a federal investigation. <laughs> so the president has just laid out a, a line of reasoning mm-hmm. that anybody over at the IRS can just follow now. Plus, it's a signal that, you know, we're, we're not really going to investigate you. No. Guys. You don't need to worry about There's it. There's no investigation going on here. I was once told by a leading Democrat, he, I said, why doesn't anyone support the fair tax on the Democrat side, or, or they won't even discuss it? He said, that's because we use the IRS as a tool to punish our enemies and reward our friends. The IRS has, is, has less to do with taxes these days and more to do with punishing people, I think. Absolutely. And, you know, this isn't the first time this has happened. Mm -hmm. You know, this happened under the Clinton administration when a whole bunch of organizations, organizations that were opposing the administration for back then, Hillary Care, Mm -hmm. were slapped with audits. The Heritage Foundation was slapped with an audit. My organization was slapped with an audit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Citizens uh, uh, Against Government Waste, Citizens uh, for a Sound Economy, all hit with audits and all critical of their position uh, on nationalized health care. Now, fast forward now, mm-hmm. who gets audited again? Those who are opposing them on health care. And I, I should hasten to add that we were audited in this current round. It's not just the Tea Party groups. 
My organization was audited. We were Mm -hmm. hit with an audit in 2012, and it wasn't until just a few weeks ago that we finally got our all clear. Well, I heard that there were 48 organizations that were political in nature, they thought, um, that were audited, and only six were on the liberal end. Now, how can you? Now, how can that possibly happen? I think there's more liberal organizations than there are conservative organizations. Right, and it's actually far more than 40-some. I think the 40 figure just comes from a group that have banned together and all have the same legal team. There's actually close to 300 organizations on the right that have been hit with audits. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I, either hit with audits or their applications for tax-exempt status have been slow-walked um, through the IRS, and they're still waiting. And this is ongoing. I mean, it, you can't get a better indication <laughs> that this is with the tacit approval of this administration than the fact that a lot of these folks are still having trouble with the IRS. You know, if this was the previous administration, this hit the press, mm-hmm. the Bush White House would have said, what the heck are you guys doing? Knock it off! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, is that if this is an audit of the IRS, an investigation of the IRS, you use the term, the fix is in. They're not even trying to hide it. When the president comes out and said there's no corruption, and he hasn't even gotten the results of it yet. <laughs> okay? I mean, well, and, yeah. well, well, this is fairly typical for the Obama junta. <laughs> yeah, very much. I mean, when you got Lois Lunderstand up there, and then that, um, that other guy, that showman guy, what a creep. I mean, what a creep that guy is. When he gets up there and he says, and he, says he has uh, this. You sure you didn't talk to anyone at the White House about this issue, Mr. Shulman? About singling out conservative groups uh, for special scrutiny? Well, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? I'm absolutely sure I did not talk to anyone. 118 visits. It didn't come up in a casual conversation after 132 members of Congress contacted you about it. You sure you didn't bring it up with anybody at the White House? Not to my memory. Yeah, it was happening, but nobody was talking about it. The guy, the head of the IRS guy, in fact, the IRS paid more visits to the White House since Obama's been there than any of the presidents put together. How, how many times when George Bush was in office did the IRS show up? I mean, four, I think, wasn't it? In, in four years? Like yeah. I, I just love how he answered uh, at the end. Uh, not to my recollection, kind of reminds me of the Watergate hearings. Yeah, way exactly. Back when yeah. I ha- have no recollection. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> repeatedly, I don't repeatedly. Well, you know, the other thing is, I, I, I don't know if you caught this, but uh-huh. Eric Holder testified before the Judiciary Committee, uh-huh. um, the Senate Judiciary Committee, last week, and he was specifically asked whether any of the organizations that had been subject to abuse if any of them, or how many of them, had uh, been interviewed by the Department of Justice. (laughs) And Eric Holder declined to answer the question. Mm -hmm. And and then Lindsey Graham, who was leading this line of questioning, said, okay, have any been uh, interviewed? (laughs) And he declined to answer the question. I mean, that is quite stunning. Yeah. In fact, they haven't they haven't interviewed anybody, and yet the president is commenting upon the conclusion of the investigation when the investigation has yet to begin. Because if you haven't talked to the victim, you haven't conducted an investigation. Yeah, uh, I was wondering. Uh, I, I couldn't find a cut of Trey saying this, but uh, Trey uh, Gowdy, boom, Trey in the room. You know, uh, let me tell you. Uh, did he ask the question directly? Has the investigation at all even started? He, he asked, uh, Lindsey Graham asked specifically if any groups that have been victim of uh, the, the IRS abuse have even been interviewed, and um, Eric Holder said, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> How did they get away with this stuff? There's all kinds of things happening with this Obama administration that are unconscionable, that if Bush had pulled it, if Reagan had pulled it, indeed, even if Clinton had been this brazen... Okay, everybody would have been in trouble. I mean, here you have the health care law, right? The Unaffordable Care Act, Obamacare, as they call it. It's shoved through, you know, uh, you know, through Congress uh, on that like one plus one vote, right? It's shoved, right. it's shoved through there, and it's not, and it, ha- it goes, it goes to the court. The courts, the, the Supreme Court knows it can't make it a law. 
a health care law based on the fact that the Interstate Commerce Act comes into conflict with it, and they didn't want to answer those questions, so they make it a tax law, you see. So then they pass it as a tax law, which can be federal, because you can have federal taxes. Then, at the, then, okay, it's a law. And then Obama gets up and changes it like 20 times. How can the president change an already established law? That's, that's the first thing. Then the IRS goes out, and then they're, they're, they're auditing people based on the names of the organizations yep. they belong to. You know, because all you had to do was have, have the word policy in yours, you know, and then at the end of that, or whatever your, whatever the your organization they, they audited it on you, you know, they do that, they get caught, busted, the paperwork is there, they blame it on some low-level stooges who said, what, in Cincinnati, and then, of course, you have this going on right now, where they're just plainly lying. How do these people, and Eric Holder gets up there and says, I don't have to answer any questions. Well, the way that they get away with it is because a lot of folks in the media view their job is to defend this administration no matter what the cost is. Um, that's, that's you, know, you know full well that if this had been a Republican administration, if uh-huh. this had been the previous administration, even Republicans in Congress would be saying, hey, look, you better come clean on this. Yeah, because who was it that ultimately convinced Richard Nixon that he had to go? Exactly. It was, exactly. Pat, it was Pat Buchanan and his pals. And, and it was, there were, uh, the Senate leadership, uh, including people like Goldwater, went to Nixon and said, you had to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's not what's happening. You know, what we're seeing right now, frankly, is the result of what we would have seen perhaps if Nixon had dug, <laughs> dug his heels in. Mm-hmm. You know, just sit there and don't respond to anything. And Nixon you know, it's could've... awfully hard, it, you, you heard... Barack Obama talk about there have been all these Senate investigations and they found nothing. Well, why have they found nothing? Because all their document requests have been thrown aside by this administration. They've just been ignoring it. What if Nixon had done done that? What if Nixon hadn't provided any information? What if there hadn't been an in, uh, independent uh, uh, pro- special prosecutor to take a look at this, Archibald Cox? Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, Nixon could have dug his heels in. Because all he had was a two-bit break-in in an office, and nothing was even stolen. You know, I mean, what did they do? Did they take anything of real value? They were just they were just peeking and peeping. They were being voyeurs, if you will, man. And you know, it was just you know, and and look, the four guys at the top of the government couldn't even keep a secret. Okay, right. now they know that. So now this administration is full force out there establishing a kingdom of sorts and nobody's nobody's rioting nobody's mad about it i am well i just hope um that at the conclusion of this administration whatever administration it is democrat or republican Uh will actually take their responsibility seriously and investigate all the things that occurred under this administration (laughs) where's this gonna go and prosecute where is this all going to go, David? You know where it's going to go? For naught. Because Obama's going to stand up there and then, you know, he's going to hold his head up where he looks down his nose as he talks to his subjects. And he's going to talk just like this. And he's going to say whatever he wants. And his blind sheeple will just stand behind him. He could stand up there and say we're going to bomb Canada. And they all go, mm, that's right, we need to do that. Well, I, I, I think that we need to do a number of things at this point. One is to demand a special prosecutor. But that only resolves kind of the, the, the immediate issue. Going down the road, we have to take a look at legislation to change what the IRS is doing and how mm-hmm. the IRS uh, can abuse organizations. We need to mm-hmm. put some, some brakes on them. We need to have some serious reforms. And that's Congress's responsibility. And hey, you know, whether you're Democrat or Republican, if the IRS can be used against one party, it can be used against the next. Let, mm-hmm. let, let's stop this from happening uh, for future administrations. Get on the ball on Capitol Hill and pass a piece of legislation. Yeah, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. I'm sadly sitting here watching, and I have all my Facebook friends and all that who all, you know, who all have their own little thing going on. None of them are gathering together to do anything. And if they showed up at the White House, you've seen what happens. They 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 erected fences around to keep wheelchair veterans out of a park. I mean, you know, where are we? This is it's 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 George Orwell's 1984. He's just a few years late. It 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 is just. 
absolutely incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you're, you're, speech, you're left speechless with it all. I don't know how to stop it. How do we stop it? Well, a- as I said, the, the way to do it is for Congress to uh, use what power they have. Obviously, the, uh, the, we have a divided government, so it is problematic. But what they should do is call all those guys up repeatedly in front of hearings and ask them these questions over and over and over again. And Congress needs to demand, or at least the House leadership needs to demand, that a special prosecutor be appointed. Yeah. But beyond that, on the IRS specifically, they can move legislation, I think. Mm-hmm. Because, the, because these can be common-sense reforms of the IRS that need to be conducted now so that abuse doesn't occur um, down the line. And, you know, it, again, it's not just one political party that can use it. Remember, Richard Nixon used the IRS. Yeah. But the liberals don't want the IRS change. They want to give them more power. Ask yourself, friends, people listening to me right now, and David, David Ridenauer is from the uh, National Center for Public Policy Research. And the thing is, is that they don't want to change. It's, it's the liberals that they, 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 they... Ask yourself the question of why does the IRS have a military-style budget for weapons and things. Why do they? Why can they call out marshals anytime they want? And, and then also ask yourself, you know, why do the blind sheeple support this? They think, the lower echelon, they think the IRS doesn't affect them because they don't pay taxes. The IRS can come and get them more easily. If that's, is that a good term? <laughs> but, but, but you, you know, the thing is, is that it is not throughout the IRS. You know, the individual agents, the, the guy who came and did our audit, uh-huh. thought the whole thing was stupid. He said, I don't know what they expect me to find. He basically uh-huh. indicated that he was sent on a political mission, and he was really angry about it. He thought it was a waste of resources to come and audit us after having reviewed the initial materials that he reviewed. Uh-huh. Yeah, well. So, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys are just basically CPAs out there. The guys in the field, a lot of them are just you know, not very political at all. No, I'm just following... They follow- see this for yeah. what, it's, what it is. Yeah, I'm just following orders, and they know what that means. They yeah. know what I that mean- means. <laughs> they know what that means. I got to go, David. I'm out of time here. God, you ever come through Charleston? You got to come in and come in the studio, my little studio here. I call it the Rocky D Museum. I will do that. All right, thanks, David. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. All right, David Ridenauer from the National... 